All right, I'll turn it over to uh, Tom DeShazo, and he's going to talk about his Medal of Honor winner. Thank you, sir, and uh, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate you all having me out from uh, Los Angeles. It was a long flight yesterday. But I'm here to talk about uh, Master to Arms, second class Michael Monsoor. Uh, I met Mike in Bud's class 250. We both uh, went through Bud's together, uh, then went to, uh, through SQT together, then to SEAL Team 3, and we're in the same platoon together, Delta platoon. Uh, Mike's from Garden Grove, California. Uh, he's got a pretty large family there. His father was a Marine. His brother was a Marine. Uh, his father was a, uh, a crew chief on a helicopter in uh, Vietnam. Did see quite a bit of combat. Mike was a uh, professional enlisted uh, sailor. I say soldier uh, a lot because SEALs, you know, we're, we're uh, not on ships too often. But he was, he was an imp a professional enlisted man. Uh, to the core, from you know his his father and his brother, I think really instilled that in him. Um, Mike's citation, you guys can read. It basically, talks about how he leapt on a grenade to save uh, his buddies. They were in a small sniper post uh, on a picket line. Um, the thing that is really uncommon about his is he was the only guy that could have escaped. There was one door. The other guys were laying in the prone uh, on their guns when the, the grenade came in and hit him on the chest. And he had a choice. He could have bailed out the door or fallen on the grenade, and he chose to fall on the grenade. Um, what you don't, they don't, you don't get from that is everything that happened before that one incident. And that's what I would like to talk about here today, because that is the most important thing uh, about Mike and, uh, and everybody uh, that was in the Battle of Ramadi, and uh, specifically Task Force Red Curry, which is who we were attached to. I've got a list here of uh, 34 significant operations over a six-month period. Um, we. We're 80, 80 combat operations, uh, took contact on 80% of them. So with 34 significant ones, you can see that there's a lot of them in there that we took contact on that we started not, we might have thought they were significant at the beginning, but we, by the end we looked back and they, might, they weren't. I'm going to go through some of those right now. And um, I was on all of these with Mike. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll brief you up with the slides and then I'll talk about some of these operations he was on because Mike's Medal of Honor is representative really for everybody that was there and it, these are all joint missions with the Army, Marine Corps, uh, we had Air Force support with uh, AC-130, we actually had a couple of Air Force controllers with us. This was not traditional SEAL operations, uh, we were working as uh, basically combat enablers, combat advisors to the Iraqi Army. Uh, if you can go ahead a slide here. That's a famous picture of Mike. Uh, I remember I'm I'm back to the to the left there, and uh, Lieutenant Commander Stone, our our platoon OIC, is there to the right. That that was kind of it. The the three of us, maybe one or two other other guys, were, worked as a C2 element with Iraqi Army elements. So we would have 50 to 100 Iraqi soldiers doing cordon and search operations in, in Ramadi. And it was a, the three of us with a radio and uh, Mike with his machine gun watching out for us while we're looking at a map because we didn't really trust the Iraqis that much. Uh, and uh, we're talking to all the armor, all the aircraft, and doing all the, the C2 piece, talking back to the talk because they don't have the communications that we have. Next slide, please. This is just an overview of our battle space in Ramadi, Task Force Red Curry's battle space, which is the first in the 506, uh, same guys that are sitting outside, uh, same guys, Band of Brothers, all the same unit. We, we lived up here at Camp Corregidor. Uh, all the, they, they stuck all the Marines right here in this building. The Marines, SEALs, and the, and the CBs all up in there because it was the worst building, of course. So uh, we, we had a tough living up there. The Army guys were living down here in their nice barracks, you know. But 
our, our typical mission would be to go out with our Iraqi army platoons, run our uh, tanks, Bradleys, in in blocking positions, and I just put them out here on the corners of one of these streets and block off a big area with armor. And then we would line up. When we first started, we'd do it right here along the canal. We'd patrol in down here, put line up a line of soldiers, and clear every single house along here and, and catch the bad guys. Now, the, the enemy was staging over in here. This was their st big staging area with all their weapons. So they would come in, gather up right here. We would, we'd saw this all on ISR. We were watching all this stuff go on, so we knew we were going to get contacted. They would come in and contact us somewhere in here in the beginning, and then we'd push farther and farther. We were pushing them back over six months until in the end we had them pushed back all the way to here. Um, Mike, on, Mike received the Silver Star for a different operation, which was right here where this X is. And uh, what happened was he, we, had, we would set in at night SEAL sniper positions out on the edge right here of where we were going to clear the next day. So they would go in and, and without, you know, try not to be compromised, which was very hard to do and set up a sniper position that usually ended up being more of a fighting position. Hopefully they weren't compromised, you know, by 8 o'clock in the morning they, they usually found out where they were. And so they're just set up, bunkered in with their machine guns and, and waiting for the contact. So we had, we had cleared all this out and we had a big sandstorm roll in on us, right, during this, this op. So we had no ISR platform. The insurgents know, know this and knew it, so of course, they're, they brought a big force up against us because we didn't have air support. Uh, what we didn't know at the time, because we hadn't really been down here that much, there's a wall around this stadium. And that, in that wall, they had put a loophole right here on this long axis street. And uh, when, when we got through clearing, the sniper OPs would fall back into the main body, and then we would all exfil together. Well, right when they, they had been found out, and right when they uh, exfilled out of their house, they were opened up by a heavy machine gun down this long axis road. Uh, one of the SEALs that was with them was shot through the leg and was immediately immobilized out in, in the street still getting shot up. Well, uh, I was right over here about this time. I, I was doing the C2 part. And uh, Mike and, and all SEAL platoons carry a, a different version of the saw machine gun that shoots a uh, 7.62 round. It's called a Mark 48. And it's really, it makes a really distinctive sound when you hear it. So when he opened up with that thing, we knew that our guys had been contacted because they had called us, told us they were getting ready to exfil the house. Well, I heard that machine gun open up, and we're thinking, man. So we get over there, and Mike and Benny Olson, another, another SEAL, had gone out into that fire from that heavy machine gun while returning fire and dragged the guy out of the street. Um, the guy ended up uh, living the, about that time we got all the tanks in there and, and took care of the, the uh, machine gunner. But uh, that's just one little story, and I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of them here of this 35, some of the ones that I think are most important. Mike was on all of them. Uh, Operation Oahu, 112 total soldiers, coordinate search in the central Malab. I didn't, I didn't, I'll preface this by saying this is the Malab. NSW, Iraqi Army and U.S. Marine Corps patrol engaged by enemy sniper and machine gun fire. Four members of eight-man patrol shot. SEALs drag U.S. Marine Corps and gunnery sergeant out of the street while under fire. Operation Machado, 48 total sol soldiers, cordon and search in central Malab. Foot patrol and insert, hot extract. SEALs acted as early warning overwatch element and C2 node between IA company and 1st and the 506. IA and NSW overwatch engaged in an hour-long firefight with the enemy. NSW snipers killed seven AIF and pinned down the enemy so that Delta Company, 1st and 506, could conduct, conduct mounted flanking maneuver. Operation Wolf Mother, 
110 total soldiers, coordinate search mission in northwestern Malab, foot patrol insert and hot extract to and from OP Hotel. IA, NSW, Overwatch element preceded clearance team during, during daylight hours and sprung the AIF as they began to maneuver on ground forces. NSW killed one AIF and called in a Humvee blocking forces to support extract. NSW used smoke grenades and machine guns on extract. Operation Hog, Hobgood, 120 total soldiers, cordon and search of Ramadi Stadium, right here. South Central Malab, foot patrol insert and hot extract to and from OP Malab. Now OP Malab is right here, which is about, I'd say, a click away, a hot, about a click hot extract. Working together, with 1st and 506 Scout Platoon, NSWIA Overwatch teams took positions near the stadium. AIF fired effectively on NSW and IA positions with small arms fire and RPGs. NSW snipers confirmed two EKIA. Army scouts confirmed two EKIA. AIF flanked NSW and IA positions. Forces conducted a feint to draw the enemy back into the firefight. SEALs, IA, and Charlie Company, 1st 506, fought with the AIF over a two-hour period. Operation Little Wise, so 125 soldiers participating, cordon in search of the Central Malab with IA, NSW, Overwatch protection. Foot patrol insert and hot extract to and from OP Hotel. Now this off, I was, remember OP Hotel is up here, and the operation was down here. This is where there's a tank hit by catastrophic killed by an IED. SEALs came into immediate contact with the enemy who catastrophically killed an M1A1 Abrams tank by an IED. SEAL communicator identified the tank had no communications and vectored blocking force Humvees to assist. SEALs conducted fire maneuver to overwatch the tank so it could safely be towed by an M88. NSW Sniper 1 EKIA, several other AIF hit by 40 millimeter deflated fire while running away. NSW position took effective enemy fire over a one hour period. Operation Eagle's Nest. Now this one, is, uh, is a funny story. Go to this one, I'll tell you after I read it. First in the 506 battalion size operation, approximately 800 soldiers participating. Mission was to secure and construct a permanent cop near Ramadi Stadium and to deny the use of Ramadi Stadium by a terrorist. Now this was a, if you, if you look at the, the strategy of Ramadi, we put in these cops and this was one of the first one we put in and it was right here, uh, right actually right here where that little blue dot is, that block right there we took over. and. Uh, This is really what won Ramadi, is putting these cops in, and they were hard fought um, by everybody involved jointly. And this is a good example of it. Foot patrol insert and extract over a 48 hour period. SEAL seized the Ramadi Haji Dahar Mosque and killed 10 AIF fighters using the AC 130. NSW and the IA took overwatch positions to support the 1st and the 506, killing two more AIF by sniper fire. Now we we came in on this one. Came in at night. This this is a mosque right here that was known as a weapon staging point for the insurgents. So we came in with our Iraqi scouts and took it in the middle of the night and then waited out there for the clearance teams to come in and they brought in the engineers and everybody to build this cop. Um, and then we set up over here in another sniper position. Um, Mike and I were, at Mike and I and Seth Stone were sitting over there, and uh, the dagger convoy, the IED clearance team was coming down here, and they just got lit up by IEDs right here. And we're watching them all from up here. And uh, so I pulled them back, and I just had the AC 130s just start shooting this intersection just to see what would happen. About that time, about uh, we had about 10 said 10 to 15 insurgents come on 
up down this road, we had eyes on them, and we called in the uh, airstrike on those guys that were setting those IEDs off. Um, and Mike and I were sitting, and our, my platoon commander, of course, was dealing with something else, and I, I'm not supposed to be calling in, you know, AC-130 fire without him knowing about it. And I'm thinking, Mike, go down and get him up here right now, because i got to kill these guys, you know, get, get him up here. And uh, he's, and this is Mike, the way he was, he's just like, all right. You know, nothing, nothing got under his skin at all. Ne never, just a cool head. You know, you'd be in a firefight, and he'd just, be, he would sit there and totally relax. Um, let's see. This Operation Black Label. We used to run counter mortar team ops up north. If, if you could see up in the map, there's some countryside up there where they'd mortar us in Camp Corregidor. So we were running these counter mortar ops where we'd go up and hide in the bushes for a couple of days and try and kill these guys. Uh, 11 man element conducting counter mortar operation in the Safia region. Mounted in foot patrol, inserted in extract. Seals stayed clandestine until enemy scouts discovered traces of coalition forces in the area at 19.30 local time. AIF effectively mortared the seals, hitting 15 meters from sniper observer positions. Seals did not have overhead cover. Uh, that's another one that uh, we were out in, in a ditch, kind of, but we got mortared by the guys we were trying to kill, which was pretty horrible. But another thing, I look over at Mike, and we're getting mortared, and there's nothing you can do. And I, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I got, I'm puckered up, and he's just smiling, looking at me, like, not, doesn't bother him in the slightest. Let's see. A couple more here. Operation Greater, 45 total soldiers participating, IA, NSW and IA overwatch for raid by IA forces, foot patrol and insert, hot extract. NSW and IA scouts were contacted with heavy, a heavy barrage of effective enemy fire on insert to overwatch positions in the central Malab near the abandoned schoolhouse east of the Ramadi Stadium. SEALs fired on a group of six IAF using, using machine guns and 40 millimeter, millimeter grenade launchers. One EKA, five potentially EKA. AI fell behind a wall and could not be accurately confirmed dead. And it goes on. There's 30, 34 of these, and the interesting one is the 34th, is the one that uh, Mike jumped on the grenade and uh, received the uh, Medal of Honor for. That was our last operation. There was a lot of guys, uh, you know, when you get shot at that much, uh, guys start to, you know, six months of that, and guys start to, to uh, I'm sure a lot of veterans know, guys lose the bubble a little bit, and uh, they, some guys don't want to, don't get a little bit like they don't want to do it anymore. And Mike Monsoor never did that. He w he. Had it, he, him, and I, and Seth Stone had a contest going on of who could get the most operations, and we were tied. We wouldn't, we wouldn't miss one. Seth had a hernia; he was sucking in his gut every day, and he would not go to the doctor because he knew they wouldn't let him go out. And Mike, one day, he's like, "Hey, man, I got an earache." I said, "What do you mean you got an earache?" He's like, "I got, I've got vertigo. I'm dizzy out there." running around. I said, well, you got to go to the doctor. You're going to miss, miss the op today. <laughs> you know? And he wouldn't do it. He said, nope. He waited. He, I think he went on two or three of them until he had a two-day period where he could go get uh, checked up, and he made it back for the next one. Now I'll go ahead and talk to, if you can go to the next slide, I'll talk about the op that Mike received his Medal of Honor. We had inserted, if you, you can see, the stadium is right up here, and there's Eagle's Nest. Uh, this was at the end of, we had pushed the enemy down here, and they were really concentrated down in these couple blocks right here, and we had had real problems with it. All these streets right here were so heavily IED'd that we couldn't put armor in there. Um, so 
we had run a couple of operations. We'd, we'd insert, we put a Bradley right here, and that Bradley covered down all the way down this street 24 hours a day. So they, they had cleared this pretty well of IEDs, but they knew there were large subsurface IEDs along these routes. So we had, we'd run most of our uh, ops that honestly weren't really sniper ops at this point. We were bunkered in. We'd, we'd stay clandestine as long as we could, and then we'd just fight the enemy the rest of the day un, until we exfilled. Um, and, and this was a joint deal. This wasn't SEALs. Uh, there, there was Army soldiers out there, Marines, Iraqi Army soldiers, everybody. But just so happens this day we had our, our sniper elements out. Uh, myself and my element were right in this building here. Uh, Mike and uh, his guys were here. Um, and it was one of those, it was just a picking back and forth day. We had been shooting back and forth with them, especially these guys. They had killed two guys down in here, and I, I think the enemy was operating right around in here. Um, and they had been just kind of picking at them, back and forth, shooting all day. We killed a guy right here, and uh, they didn't really want to come around here. I, I, I just don't think, I think they, these guys had this locked down so well, we weren't seeing as much enemy up here. But we were kind of supporting these guys along here, and uh, they got hit by an RPG around noon. And uh, we had been hit by RPGs so much, you know. It dusted up the house, but they were nothing. They said, yeah, we just got hit by an RPG. Everybody's fine. Um, so about 20 minutes after that, uh, we hear another explosion. Uh, and then those guys had all been hit by the grenades. So actually the Iraqi Army scouts I was with said, hey, you got wounded down in the house. You got to go down. And right, it was a coordinated attack. So right when they got hit by that grenade, um, they, the enemy just really pumped up the volume of fire at them. So we did a bounding uh, just a bounding IAD forward, firing it all the way down this street, and got in there and uh, got upstairs. And of course, you know, I won't go into the. the Carnage, but it was pretty bad. Um, we got the guys out. I, I was, uh, I'm the communicator, so I basically ran the, uh, the Kazavac while everybody else carrying three wounded guys out of, out of a, that are th weigh 300 pounds with gear on is not an easy task. It took almost everybody else. So I took the Iraqis and cleared us out of here. We had this Bradley drive down and pick them up and take them up to the aid station. Um, like I said, the details of uh, Mike's citation kind of give you the, the right there on the, the spot story. But uh, what is really important, I think, to everybody that was uh, in Ramadi uh, at that time, especially the, the Marines and the, and the soldiers the, that uh, were there that summer, um, was this is kind of a uh, for all of us because I think that there's so many other guys that were killed and wounded out on, on a lot of these other operations, soldiers and Marines, that uh, I think everybody kind of feels like they're a part of Mike, and, and it's kind of a culmination uh, of our camaraderie and how well we work together uh, as just American fighting men, uh, rather than sometimes there's a uh, this you know, competition between the branches and, and between the SEAL teams and, and uh, the conventional army units and things like that. And, and we put really put all that aside and worked together and uh, defeated the enemy there in Ramadi. And uh, we're, we're all proud of uh, that and we're really proud of Mike.